We just defeated Bowser Jr. and the Koopalings. Let's recover and have a chat. Uh, with me today, I have Brad, the Archdeacon of Mario Amusement. I like having that religious uh, symbol attached to me. So, yeah, I'll take that one. I'm Archdeacon Brad. <laughs> Gerardo, the Viscount of Sony Excitement. Greetings. And Teresa, the High Warden of All Opinions Pokemon. Bow, all of my subjects. And me, I am Hunter, and I am also here. Um, man, guys, a lot has happened since the last episode. Um, Sony did their state of play on the 23rd. Uh, Pokemon did their annual obligatory Pokemon Presents on Pokemon Day. And also, each of us went to Super Nintendo World in Hollywood, which is pretty cool. Not all at the same time. Uh, Teresa, I know that you had some conflicts, but then you ended up going later on with your sister. Is that right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's correct. Cool. So I say that we should just um, jump on into it. Yeah, so uh, we had a state of play. Uh, overall, it was uh, okay, I guess. Uh, they started out talking a lot about the PSVR 2 since that uh, that was uh, about to release, I believe, at the time. So, uh, yeah, so they went over a couple of games. And most of them look okay. Uh, a couple interesting. I think, for the most part, Synapse and Before Your Eyes looked like the best games they showed there, in my opinion. Um, I was really interested in those ones, too. Yeah. So... Synapse basically looks like a, uh, you know, your standard VR first person shooter, but it has a really uh, interesting art style. It's very gray with some very hard, uh, bright colors thrown mm -hmm. into it. It has this like mechanic where you can pick up people using a kind of like like the force, basically, which I think looks really cool. The thing about this is that like with VR games, any VR game with a gun is you know it's a first person shooter and uh, it, it reminds me of like an issue with vr that i have personally where uh vr is a controller it's i hear a lot of people talking about how vr is like they see it as like the next big thing but i disagree with that concept fundamentally because it's just a controller so all of the games for it are basically first person games first person shooters there are some like third person platformers but it, it, i feel like those don't take advantage of the vr's features in a lot of unique ways except for something like maybe um astrobot rescue mission so mm. in terms of this it is a basic vr first person shooter with a cool mechanic that probably appears in some other vr games and an interesting art style it looks cool but i don't really have that much more interest beyond that i guess it reminds well, me of Super Hot a little bit, but kind of without, without the without the without the interesting mechanic that I that honestly sold me on VR with Super Hot. Yeah, and that's a thing. Like if you take away the art style that this game has, make it look generic, and then then you have like almost your basic VR game right there, from what I saw. And maybe, you know, maybe there's a lot more interesting stuff in the game. You know, I'm not going to mm -hmm. discount a game without playing it like that. But those are just my first impressions. The other one before your eyes is like a completely different story. And I think, uh, you know, this game came out on Steam. Uh, I don't remember how long ago, like a year or two ago. And it, so it always had this uh, unique mechanic where uh, you're in a location and I believe you can interact with the environment. I don't know if you just sit down. And look around that might be the case but every time you blink it tracks that and it changes you get pushed forward through time to different points of uh the character you're playing as is life mm, i think that's super cool yeah that's very cool so the psvr2 can track that now the psvr1 wouldn't have been able to do that it's tracking your blinks and then that's yeah. kind of a yeah. gameplay feature in and of itself yes oh that's a mechanic. So the PSVR has a lot of eye tracking stuff mixed, like built into it. So even mm -hmm. uh, the, one of the reasons why it's able to run super well on 
not low end hardware like ps5 is nothing to scoff at but like it's not a super powerful gaming pc which can really push vr but one of the ways that they were able to combat that is by um rendering everything at a very very low setting like kind of blurring Mm -hmm. everything except for tracking your eyes where you're looking and then rendering that at really high detail and apparently Uh. it's pretty good it's pretty quick at like registering how fast you're moving your eyes and where you're moving your eyes to um render it pretty quickly i know other games do similar things and with other headsets i think the index or something does that but um from what I understand, it's way slower than the PSVR 2. Yeah. The PSVR yeah. 2 is able to do that really, really fast and really effectively. And so it doesn't surprise me that they're tracking your blinks too. Yeah, that's true. And that's a, that's a functionality that uh, all PSVR 2 games can take advantage of now if the, if the mm-hmm. developers code it in. Mm-hmm. So thanks to that, PSVR 2 games have the potential to look a lot more impressive uh, than VR one games, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. in in general, I always thought of VR one games as like um, more on par with like PS three level graphics. With VR two, I put them more on par with PS four level graphics from what I've seen, but I haven't experienced it firsthand because I don't have it yet. And that that's actually pretty good because the graphical fidelity between generations is starting to. It's more about performance than it is the graphical, uh, yeah. the way that it looks graphics wise. Yeah, looking at some of the other games that we're going to get to in a little bit, I almost wonder sometimes if we really needed the PS5 at this point. So mm-hmm. that, which is nothing to say negative against the PS5, but like that just goes to show like how powerful the PS4, or at least the PS4 Pro was at like actually mm-hmm. pushing out like really beautiful looking things. Like I was just comparing Final Fan- like images of Final Fantasy VII Remake from the ps4 and the ps5 Uh, they're not super different mainly like the reflections and stuff like that are completely different but for the most part it's like it looks like that you're looking at the same game yeah Yeah. even even beyond that i did a comparison between god of war 2016 on both the ps4 and the ps5 at the same time on a 1080 tv and a 4k tv right next to each other the on the ps5 it looked almost on par with ragnarok hmm oh nice like you could tell it was an older game, but it there was a very stark difference next to each other. I think just playing it by itself, uh, it's a lot harder to tell. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, there was a difference. There is some differences for sure. Yeah. And how expensive is? Because I'm looking honestly at at some of the VRs that that are out there. I was even considering the the Quest Two or whatever is coming after that. How much is the VR Two? It's uh, five fifty, just the VR two. Yeah. yeah, for the VR two, uh, the controllers, uh, some headphones I... I think it comes with, but they kind of suck apparently. Yeah, the headphones are like <laughs> uh, like integrated. If you get like um, the PlayStation Pulse headset, they're designed mm. so that you can wear both at the same time. And that's a lot more immersive. I've done that with the VR one. Um. And then I can't remember if it comes with a camera or if it even needs a camera. It might not. There is a PS. There is a PlayStation Five camera. Yeah, I'm sure it utilizes it. Yeah, the VR one needed the camera. Yeah, they also introduced a few other games: the Foglands and a Green Hell VR and Journey to Foundation, all of which are releasing later this year. I think it's really cool for releasing a brand new piece of hardware to kind of prove that there are a lot of really interesting games coming out Uh, synapse also really interested me and so did before your eyes journey to foundation really interested me too actually Um, but for some games that might be interesting to one person but not necessarily the other it's really good to show a wide variety of brand new games that are launching the same year as this hardware yes i I forget how many uh releases there were i believe there were something like 30 to 40 launch titles for the vr2 and does that include uh psvr games psvr1 games they're not backwards compatible oh oh really that's right that's right yeah wow um it it sounded bad at first uh to me but um i kind of predicted it because uh the hardware in the psvr2 is like almost completely different from the hardware in the psvr1 and -hmm. a lot of it is because of um the vr1 was basically uh 
Well, it uses the PS Move controllers. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and they're they're no different from when they were during the PS3 era. Right. Which, let me just say, I think is like one of the most impressive uh, product turnarounds I've ever seen in game industry history, in my opinion. Because mm-hmm. the move was complete failure, and then Sony turned it into a success. So, <laughs> Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. There was also some other games, aside from the PSVR and stuff. Um, Destiny 2 Lightfall, which I've been trying my hardest not to look at because I get too sucked into Destiny, and I just can't get into mm-hmm. that again. Chia looked pretty cool. I, I think that that's how you pronounced it. It's a game based on uh, a small little islands near Antarctica, kind of going over some of the culture and some of the um, mythology and religion there, which I think is super cool. The Kanak people there in uh, New Cal- Caledonia. I think that's how you pronounced it. That's coming out, I think, later this month, actually, March 21st. And Humanity, I don't know how many... Uh, how many people were super interested in this? I played the demo because the demo launched later the same day and I kind of loved it. It's kind of like Lemmings in a weird kind of way. Uh, very puzzle based. It's made from the same people as Tetris Effect, which I think is super cool. And is just generally seems like they're doing a lot of like really good pro consumer type things like building level creators and stuff like that, too, which is super cool to see. I, I personally was super interested in that one. The character in Chia looks like a character you'd see in RuneScape when you're up close, like and they're talking in their little boxes. So the art. That's kind of what I see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that's bad. I love RuneScape, but I just made note of that when watching it. Like that kind of looks like a RuneScape character. Yeah, that, that's fair enough. <laughs> I think that some of the visuals are really cool. If maybe it's not technically as a uh, visually impressive I still thought it was pretty cool. So I that just am super interested in those kind of games and kind of sh- showcasing a lot of culture that in some places is really disappearing. Like Chia, very few people actually live on that island anymore. Most of them are French because it's a French territory now. Mm-hmm. So to kind of show the last remnants of that culture to um, like through video games, I think is super cool. I, I, I can appreciate the, the care that it goes into these other cultures and the games that they can represent. Exactly. Yeah. I am kind of extremely excited for Naruto cross Boruto ultimate ninja storm connections, which is a title. Um, That's quite a time. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the idea is that they're combining every game, I think in the ultimate ninja storm series and connecting all of the stories into like one mm-hmm. cohesive story, including some of the Boruto stuff. And I, it looked like every character from previous games too, all in one game, which That's is super nice. cool. I, I've, I don't know how many people play the Ultimate Ninja Storm games or just the Shonen Jump games in general. For the mm-hmm. most part, they're all kind of samey. I feel like they haven't updated their engine since the first <laughs> Ultimate Ninja Storm, but they're super fun. It's really solid, really fluid gameplay. Uh, and you get a run around as ninjas and actually make you feel like you're playing as those characters. See, I play most of the Naruto games around the PS2 GameCube era. And I mean, like most of those games I'm looking at how they're kind of handling, um, not necessarily handling, but the the gameplay for this game. And it kind of reminds me of that. I love mm. the the 3D fighting genre um, yeah. games like Tenkaichi or Clash of Ninja. And also, I just love the Naruto story. So I, I think may, maybe I'd give this one a go if it, if it comes out. I know I know this is a state of play, but I play mostly PC. So I hope that right. I, I don't know if they confirmed it or not, but I'd play it on PC. Yeah, for sure. I know my girlfriend is super interested in the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm games. Um, she's played like most of them. And uh, I know that we're both just super excited about that one. And you recently just binge watched all of Naruto. So I don't know if you want to yep. play with us too. We can get into like the meta or something <laughs> like that. Uh, my favorite character is Zabuza, which is oh, okay. weird because it's like right at the beginning. But he was still my favorite the whole way through. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, he's super cool. And yeah, the... Um water village guy right i thought what's up with his sword was super cool mm-hmm. they still use it even in boruto they they claim that sword again oh okay um to get to uh street fighter i'm not much of a fighting game person brad i know that you're super excited for this one yeah i am extremely excited for this one for one i i 
I've been a Street Fighter fan since a, since I was a kid. I played that one with my dad. Street Fighter Two New Challengers, um, or World Challenger. Number six is coming out. It's looking fresh. It's looking nice. They ju- they announced um, Ch- uh, not not Chun Li, <laughs> Cammy and Zangief, as well as I think Lily. But I don't care too much too uh, about her. But um, Cammy's looking nice. That's in more ways than one. But I'll I'll leave that <laughs> one to imagination. <laughs> Yeah, he does uh, good. I'm a big Street Fighter fan. I have another friend, Mike. He's a big Tekken fan. So we go back and forth between those two games. And this year is looking like a like a pretty hefty year for, for fighting games. So I, again, I'm not much of a Street Fighter person, but I do like mm-hmm. the way that they're handling the story with this one. So that you get to like walk yeah. around in like a 3D-like environment and uh, actually walking along the streets. And it actually looks like you're doing more street fighting, whereas I think some of the mm-hmm. some of the previous games it looked like kind of lost the plot there. But in this, you're actually literally fighting in the streets again, which I think is super cool. So th- it's really weird because the way that it looks, it kind of reminds me of. And Gerardo, you're gonna have to tell me this game. It reminds me of a Mortal Kombat game, an older one. Yeah, that's Mortal Kombat Deception. That's the sixth I, game. <laughs> you knew immediately. I knew. I knew you would know. <laughs> so it reminded me of of kind of of kind of like that and i always appreciate a game that kind of brings me into the world and crafts their that world building so yeah the, i'm looking forward to it the single player in mortal kombat deception their adventure mode is probably one of the best like story modes in like fighting game history that's that's good to hear because fighting yeah. games don't normally have the best story modes outside of the what if ending in an arcade mode that you get for each character yeah that's true so i think i'm really glad to see street fighter uh going for this and i hope that it uh, works out really well so street fighter 5 kind of did that where they have an overarching kind of story um, as you as you go as you go about it, it, it's just a little a little harder to get into it. It's <laughs> there's a lot of quote unquote DLC characters that everybody's technically free, but you have to play an obscene amount of gameplay in order to actually unlock it without actually just you know shelling out money. Hmm. So I'm hoping they don't they're not too aggressive this go around with Street Fighter Six. I don't know if they if they if they dropped any information on that, but I really hope they don't expect me to play a thousand hours to unlock one character it's a very ea way of doing business <laughs> well you don't have to play a thousand hours you could just pay for it <laughs> well that's 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 what i don't want to do. <laughs> i already paid the 60 dollars or or, or or have they jumped up to 70 dollars now I, i've been saying like that. 70 80 bucks now or something oh god it's ps5 games uh well shucks Maybe I will have to start sh- shelling out that. Don't do it. <laughs> well, speaking of Capcom games, what comes? Did you guys see the Resident Evil Four trailer? Yep, I uh, yeah. back in also my I'm not a huge Resident Evil friend. <laughs> back in two thousand. Oh. Well, I <laughs> did you see the updated trailer? <laughs> no. Uh, well, <laughs> to be fair, they've been doing a lot of the a lot of uh, remakes of these old games, and Resident Evil Four is next on the chopping block. But yeah. unlike some of those other games that really needed it, uh, I think our, one of the last episodes, this comes from the GameCube and PlayStation era of of games. So it's it's more about getting that graphical fidelity up. And yeah, they're bringing it up from the ground up. But man, Resident Evil 4 was such a great game, even to this day. But yeah, um, I, I actually have pretty fond memories of this game because it's it's one of the few that I played with you. Mm. If memory serves. Wait, um, I know, I know, we did play it. Did we play it all the way through though? Uh, we might have. I don't think I remember seeing the end, but we did play like a decent amount of it. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I I like I like Leon. <laughs> Leon is, I think, the best Resident Evil representative. Um, sorry, Chris, Jill, Claire, all these other ones, but I I'm looking forward to playing as. The smooth talking and jokester that is Leon. He wasn't really much of that in Resident Evil Six, but we don't talk about that one. If they remake that one, I hope they entirely remake that one. That's what I'm hoping for for Dead Space Three. Oh yeah. Well, I mean they they're doing one, and there's there's a big resurgence in these older horror games. Uh, I know Resident Evil Two is at least right now 
I think it's my favorite, if not the best in the series. But before that was Resident Evil 4. So if they can capture the spark of Resident Evil 4, but also deliver something gameplay experience wise that Resident Evil 2 gave gave me. I'm not going to lie, guys. I think that might be game of the year. <laughs> it's fan fantastic. Hunter, you need to you need to play that one. I haven't played through any of the Resident Evil games. I had no so well, if you about the franchise. If, if you play any of them, play four. OK, good to know. I was going to say they, they're also bringing back the mercenaries, which is a big fan favorite as well. Think of it kind of like um, zo- like Nazi zombies and or like like horde mode where it's just waves of monsters. And mm-hmm. it's kind of like one of the fir- one of the original games to do that. That's coming out in just a few weeks, too. Yeah, I know I still need to play play and be eight. I'm almost done with eight. But once once we're d- once we finish eight at my house, we'll move on to four. Can't wait. OK, so they also announced a couple of other games. I forget. Did we talk about Goodbye Volcano High? No. OK. I mean, if you're into Scalies, there's a Goodbye Volcano High that's uh, coming in <laughs> June. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3, which I'm kind of excited for. I played two. I didn't beat it. I didn't get all the way through, but I, I remember enjoying it when I was little. Um, Wayfinder is like this MMO type deal. Uh, they're doing a beta right now, I think, uh, or at least maybe sh- close or something by the time that this episode goes live. And also Suicide Squad kills the Justice League uh, coming out May 26. Now. Gerardo, what are your raw thoughts about that game? Go Oof. for it. <laughs> that game could have been something really great, and uh, it's it's getting beaten down so hard with the the online model with the battle pass and the oh, the gear sets. Yeah, they announced a battle pass for the game, and uh, you have to be always online to play it, even though they say you can play through the game by yourself, which that is at least cool. So I'm interested in seeing the story because I like I I really love Batman Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. I haven't played mm-hmm. the other ones, and especially because this is going to be Kevin Conroy's last appearance as Batman. So yeah, in terms of the gameplay itself, from what they showed, uh, I will say I was disappointed in certain aspects of it like uh i think all four of the characters kind of look like they play pretty much the same like there are some differences but it's like if i was gonna play as king shark i feel like i wouldn't expect to be using a gun on enemies (laughs) and you know if i'm playing captain boomerang i expect to be using boomerangs and not assault rifles that's a fair (laughs) assumption yeah. Um, I did see they they did something kind of cool where he has like a, a boomerang that's infused with the Flash's speed force, so he can move really fast. And I think that's a cool concept in general. But uh, but again, yeah, all the characters kind of look like they play a little too similarly. So it looks um, overall kind of disappointing. So Pokemon Day happened on February 27th this year. Pokemon Day itself is something that happens every year where um, the Pokemon Company International celebrates the anniversary of Pokemon Red and Green releasing in Japan. And usually they have a Nintendo Direct-like kind of presentation. They're talking about more so uh, the things that they plan for the year. And this year was no different than the past few years. It started bright and early at 6 o'clock in the morning uh, for us West Coasters. Way too early. Um, Good thing for me, I was already awake. <laughs> there is quite a couple of things to go over when it comes to this Pokemon Day. A lot of them are the mobile games. There was uh, a couple of other things. They kind of touch on stuff not related to video games too. So like Pokemon Day is like the entire um pokemon pokemon name like brand mythos almost yeah 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 um so they started off with talking um about the pokemon world championships happening in yokohama japan this year um which is actually kind of funny they said this is the first time a a championship uh will be held in japan and i could have sworn (laughs) uh uh that's that's false but apparently that's still that's not the case (laughs) I think the Pokemon World Championships has changed a lot since they were hosting in Japan, like several, many, many years ago. Um, mm-hmm. It's become 
it went from place where some people got invites to play in either the video game or the trading card game with very little fanfare to becoming almost like a big Pokemon convention, like multi-day Pokemon convention. So there's more mm-hmm, than mm-hmm. just like the actual championships at Pokemon. Yep. The yeah, they Pokemon have world championships. They have uh, like trading card, uh, Pokemon Go, uh, Pokemon Unite, even. Um, Pokemon, in the past, um, they had, fight, they had po- the, Pokemon, the new fighting Pokemon. game. Pokemon, yeah, they had yeah. Pokemon in the past, even. Right. Um, I don't think they still do it, though. Oh. Um, but yeah, it's a big old celebration, you know? Um, mm. And this year it's going to be in Yokohama, Japan. Um, so that's fun. I've always and wanted then, to go to one. Yeah. Um, I think uh, 2019 was in San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go to that one. I think that they were playing because they've done it twice in California. Mm-hmm. They've done one in San Francisco that we were trying to go to before yeah. we realized that it was more of a closed off event. Bef- that was before they really opened it up to the general public and before it kind of became a Pokemon Expo when mm-hmm. it was more f- of a focus type thing. But nowadays you go and there's people doing cosplay, there's cosplay gatherings, there is all sorts of stuff. There's all these panels and stuff that you can go to. It's a lot like going to like an anime convention or video game convention or comic con or one of those type things, except everything is focused on Pokemon. Pokemon. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe sometime, maybe uh, when it's a bit closer to, to home, so to speak. Um, You're not going to fly out to Yokohama. I mean, sure. If, if I had the, uh, the resources to do so, um, I, it would be something pretty cool. I thought, um, it would be kind of funny, or at least they did it for uh, the last, uh, I guess, year of Sword and Shield, where um, I believe last year uh, it was in London, yeah. and uh, you know, in in the in the lore, like Galar is based off of uh, the the UK, so they had it in London. I thought they might have, you know, had it in Spain maybe this year, but. Whatever, it's fine. Uh, Yokohama, Spain, same thing. Same thing. <laughs> um, and then after that, they touched on a uh, TCG set. It's um, I don't know. It started off with this really, really uh, like classy hotel, um, looking place, and uh, it was just to introduce um that they're bringing back mm-hmm. like the first few TCG sets and modernizing it and selling it in this classy looking uh type it looks like there was like a play field so to like kind of eliminate the need for a play mat they're releasing this two player thing where you can both play on the same like it looked like it's either metal or wooden construction or something like that and it included Mm -hmm. um things like burn counters stuff for dice and stuff like that even like custom dice stuff looking things which i thought it was pretty cool i'm honestly probably going to get it i haven't played pokemon tcg in a while but um a lot of my tcg friends have been all around the world and have just recently been back in california in, back in southern california for the first time in a while uh, including half of them being in japan for a while so if i'm going to get back into tcg this looks super cool those damage counters i was just looking at it again those are those are sick mm-hmm. assuming those are damage counters like it's just kind of it's just generic. You can use it for anything, but we all know the yeah. point of them. <laughs> um, yeah, TCG has always been something that I, I've been kind of interested in, but I'm more so like collecting the cards as far as uh, just having that. Um, but I haven't done cards since uh, probably before Sword and Shield. And then we were introduced to a new Netflix series. Um, uh, they're collaborating to make a stop motion um, type animation series on uh netflix it's called pokemon concierge um and apparently the whole thing about it is uh they're trying to bring in at least from what they were saying to us in the pokemon day stuff um they said that they're trying to make it a series based around um myths and legends that the fans themselves have created about the the series um so that could mean almost anything uh so i'm kind of interested to see where they where they take that i I really like the uh the idea of that 
They um, really didn't show much of it. Off. No, no, no. There was a small teaser trailer, but it just kind of showed a Psyduck, which I'm assuming is uh, the trainer of uh, the Pokemon of the trainer who's talking. I really like stop motion, so I think this one sounds yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, I, I'm definitely gonna check it out if I when it comes out. Like I said, they touched on the mobile games after that. Just a couple things to say about it. Pokemon Unite has new, like I said, Pokemon Day events. Uh, Cafe Remix has um, Pokemon Day events. Uh, Pokemon Masters. Uh, they ha- introduced something called Neo Champions, uh, which I'm kind of assuming is just like, what if this character won championship instead of you type of outfits? Yeah, it's kind of cool. Which Pokemon has been about kind of lately, these alternate timeline things. Mm-hmm. So uh, these Neo champions uh, are Hopbeat and Marnie, and uh, they all have uh, the Galarian uh, birds, which is kind of cool. But, yeah. uh, you know, as they were showing them, I was like, you know, these kind of look like them. And then I started to realize, oh, maybe... Uh, <laughs> Uh, there was a, a tinfoil hat yeah tinfoil hat there is maybe there was a reason for that <laughs> pokemon's uh, done that in the past though like if they kind of see this pokemon going with a particular trainer then they'll kind of design the trailer to be complementary to that pokemon uh-huh. um and then they t- started talking about something we heard about almost four years ago now uh, called pokemon sleep I can't believe that we it's taken this long for us to know anything about this app. Yeah, it started to give Wii Vitality Sensor vibes. And, uh, you know, it, it. they also kind of didn't explain much about it at the same time. Like, they kind of introduced it as a a, mon- a sleep monitoring app to, to meet Pokemon with. So, like, mm-hmm. you're going to go to sleep and you, you set it and forget it type thing and when you wake up in the morning you get you know resources or something in the game and it rewards you for for your sleeping habits and like the whole setup of it is you're helping this professor research pokemon sleep type i used to have a sleep app that um would monitor my sleep and it would check to see what level like where in my sleep cycle i was like it wouldn't wake me up during my REM sleep. So because it was also an alarm because that when you wake up during REM sleep, you tend to be super groggy and stuff. So it would kind of figure out my lightest sleep stage. And then I would give it like a time like, hey, wake me up within this hour, give or take. And it would wake me up and it was super refreshing. Like while I had that app, I think it's kind of defunct now. But while I had it, it I basically had the best sleep. And I woke up the best, uh, feeling the best that I've ever felt. So if Pokemon Sleep does something similar to that, and it seems like it is because it's classifying different types of sleep. But there's like all of these like um, snoozing versus uh, drowsing and other types of sleep. Um, I think that that's pretty cool. I'm sure that there probably will be a timer function for you to be able to uh, wake up, like set it within like a good hour, maybe 30 minutes. Like, hey, I just want to wake up around this time wake me up whenever you feel is the best for me mm-hmm. and then it'll do hopefully something along those lines since it's already tracking that kind of stuff too just like that other app and that other app kind of gave me a readout like hey this is how good your sleep was this is the <laughs> type of sleep that you had and you know it was actually very very similar except this is just pokemon themed yeah i am quite actually interested in using it i didn't uh you know looking at it initially initially it was like kind of confusing but giving it a couple of lookovers it's not a terrible idea i mean it's weird that it's pokemon yeah it's just an it's an <laughs> option for yeah. sleep tracking and it. it's also gonna somehow work with pokemon go which is more interesting to me in that regard um it seems like there's gonna be um a tie-in for at least one pokemon um there's gonna it's gonna give you uh after you link the two apps together Mm-hmm. It's going to give you um, access to special research in Pokemon Go to uh, get a Snorlax with a sleeping cap. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Pokemon Go really loves these uh, Pokemon wearing hats for some reason as uh, special encounters. It's always funny to see what they think of. Mm-hmm. 
it's really easy way to add like you know exclusive pokemon for trainers to collect that aren't just like you know the legendaries from the games Mm -hmm. yeah like whatever is going on during this event is like a special thing so you have to play during this time in order to get it um and alongside that they introduce the pokemon go plus plus which uh is a new peripheral that you have for Pokemon Sleep and for Pokemon Go. When you use it in Pokemon Sleep, it kind of acts as like a alarm of sorts or like a a notification type thing. It it makes Pikachu noises. Um, And the more that you use it, the more Pikachu noises you unlock. And so it works in Pokemon Go as well. It has the same functionality as the... Pokemon, Pokemon Go Plus. Pokemon Go Plus, the Pokeball controller from Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. And if you use, if you have an Apple Watch, it, it has that same functionality. It's literally just a Pokemon Go Plus. Except yeah, also but asleep. Except, except now you can select Great and Ultra Balls. Uh, <laughs> did um, they announce the price for that? Uh, I want to say I they did, but I, I couldn't bring it up right now i think the pokemon go plus plus is currently on pre-order for nintendo's website for 55 dollars whereas the pokemon go plus was originally 58 dollars but is now around 45 ish or 35 ish and uh yeah that that was they're touching on pokemon sleep and pokemon go um later that day after uh the the Pokemon Presents ended. They introduced uh, the roaming form of Gimme Ghoul into Pokemon Go. Uh, so now if you um, connect your Pokemon Scarlet or Violet to Pokemon Go, you can capture roaming form Gimme Ghoul in Pokemon Go. And then once Pokemon Home integration is connected to uh, Scarlet and Violet, you can uh, put roaming form Gimme Ghoul into Scarlet and Violet. Uh, through home and uh, speaking of scarlet and violet after that they talked about the first uh, probably the first and only two dlcs um a la sword and shield uh, uh with uh the hidden treasure of area zero part one and two the teal mask and the indigo disc and these are just i'm assuming end game stories because that wasn't necessarily the case in sword and shield like you could have started the dlcs as soon as possible right in uh in sword shield um but we'll see how they choose to go about it for uh, scarlet and violet um they're supposed to be bringing in um new areas in the teal mask you're going to be going on a sort of summer vacation style type uh, adventure and meeting um, the new, uh, uh, I guess, legendaries uh, of that region. It's because it's not Paldea. You're going to a different uh, region, I think. Hmm. Um, and they're 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 based off of different masks, and um, which the teal mask. That's where the name comes from. Uh, I think there's four four Pokemon in that DLC that are at least, you know, legendary-ish. And then in the Indigo Disc, we're going to be... Uh, I think it's going to be in Paldea, uh, maybe. Maybe a little bit in that area that's, like, closed off in the game right now. That's in the top right of the map. Um, I, I believe that's probably where the Indigo Disc is going to take place. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, it's just kind of like a, a different school... And you're going there to uh, be an exchange student, they said, I think. Um, And it's just like a battle type of facility. uh, Going off of the key art that they uh, teased us with. And then it's also going to have a a new legendary to go along with it. That was hinted at in uh, the story mode of Scarlet and Violet. The, the, the The disc Pokemon. And then they said that. If you purchase the DLCs before um, they come out, I believe I, they're giving you until October, if I'm correct in saying that. You get uh, outfits for your character in uh, to use right now in Sword and Shield, uh, Scarlet and Violet, along with a special Hisuian Zoroark 
um, ahead of uh, Pokemon Home's release. That has a special move, the Dark Terra type, and the Charismatic Mark for you to uh, attach to your Cecilia Zora arc. And then after that, they're like, we have one more thing to to say. Uh, releasing today uh, is the uh, a special Terra Raid for um, the Pokemon Walking Rake, uh, Suicune, uh, Paradox Form, uh, and Iron Leaves, Verizion. Uh, paradox form so these these were kind of teased in the uh, scarlet and violet if you took a look at any of the books in the school but i guess uh, people expected the dlcs to actually resolve uh, to center around these two pokemon but it turns out that's not the case um and so yeah they're they're just kind of in the game as as raids um they're a one-time only kind of like the uh previous uh uh, raids that they've been doing in game that that's kind of the gist of pokemon day and just to add on to that the um the three pokemon that you mentioned earlier they mentioned they put out some social media stuff on like instagram twitter that mm-hmm. kind of thing the pokemon that they're the legendaries presumed legendaries that they're showing off in the teal mask okidogi that's like the big the, the green monkey. the dog yeah thing. The, like yeah exactly monkey dory which monkey is the dory. monkey looking guy the uh-huh. little blue face looking thing. And that bird is a uh, pheasant, pheasant de pity, pheasant de pity, which is a fantastic name and also a fantastic design. Yeah. So all of those names are kind of based off of things of saying it's okay. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> everything is uh, monkey dory. Um, Oki, Oki doki. And it's, it's quite pheasant dipitous that we're all together right now. Yeah, serendipitous. serendipitous. So, it's, it's fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I really love that. There you go. They also mentioned some uh, links to Pokemon Go with Scarlet and Violet. Yeah. Where, so in Pokemon Go, you can walk around and uh, as you're spinning these Pokestops, you're receiving these gifts that you can give to people. Um, and they include little postcards of each like individual place. So like if you get a postcard from like a specific fountain or so if you spin the Pokestop for a specific fountain and give that as a gift, that'll be the fountain as a postcard. It'll be a picture of the fountain as the postcard. And they're doing that again for... So they're introducing that functionality into Scarlet and Violet, where you can send the postcards over to your game as Scarlet and Violet. And then as you're doing that, uh, different patterns of the Pokemon Vivian appear. Which is kind of the whole idea behind Vivian uh, when it was first introduced is that depending on the location that you are, different patterns will appear on it. So I think that's cool, kind of a cool idea, depending on where you go in real life and send that over to uh, Scarlet and Violet, different patterns of Pokemon will uh, uh, Vivian will appear in the game. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's pretty um, new to Pokemon Go itself to um, sending not sending postcards, but. Uh, the the whole connection to Vivian and postcards was quite the more recent addition, and people had already been uh, saving postcards before this was happening. So I'm kind of glad I I started doing that because uh, that's actually the only way aside from Pokemon Go to to get different patterned uh, Vivian right now reasonably. Aside from Pokemon Black and White, which mm-hmm. they're actually shutting down the servers to be able to transfer. Pokemon oh. over from those old games so yeah x and y or sorry x and y yeah yeah um later this month actually i think they're shutting down those servers so mm-hmm. this is going to be really the only way to do that speaking of that they they did say uh pokemon bank will be free to use after after the eShop closure and then just to, well t- to, t- to touch on the gimmick thing in pokemon go because i did a bit of failed research when that uh, came out I, I, I assume that it would be nice to talk about on the show about how it works. Um, it's kind of like the Meltan box if you ever use that. Once you send a postcard over to uh, to Scarlet or Violet, uh, it activates um, something in Go where you can just... It's kind of like an incense that you, you start and it lasts for 30 minutes. Um, and it, it just spawns Gimme Go, but you got to keep moving constantly. Um, and if you if you catch the gimme go in a specific way, it has a chance of dropping coins. 
uh, that you need 999 of just so I can scroll it and borrow it to evolve Gimme Ghoul into uh, Golden Go. Um, but uh, the drop rate is abysmal, so I hope they fix that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a nice thing to, to finally have. Um, I hope home is updated soon because i gotta finish my living decks i gotta put them all together because uh, I, i'm ready for that to be done until these new pokemon come out so speaking of good segues and of um uh talking about theme parks we all went to super nintendo world right not all at the same time i think but um uh brand gerardo and I went and then unfortunately, Teresa, you weren't able to make it that time around. But then you later went with your sister just to kind of understand like the basic idea of it. It's almost like one big video game or just a game theme park because not all of it is video games. It's, it is an entire level that you do like from start to finish. This is like how I kind of got it, got through it. You collect well, the coins yeah. that you would typically do in like a level like the golden coins. And it unlocks like a door and it I it's going to sound bad in a way, but like I love the way that it excludes me if I'm not good or if I didn't put the time in. There's right. There's many games throughout the park that you have to do if you want to do the final mini game and the final like the, the quote unquote boss fight with Bowser Jr. You have to do the other things first. Otherwise, right. you can't do it. And I actually love it. It really, it, even though it's an amusement park, and yeah, I get it. It's it's not it's not necessarily like a like a world you jump into, but it tries pretty hard to make it feel like it. No, it's and super cool. It was I like a it game succeeds. in and of itself with its own story and everything. Yep, it's right when you walk in. It's like, oh my gosh, Bowser Junior took this quick. We gotta go get that back. Took this thing. And walking through the warp pipe to go into Peach's castle to look to my left and see Babom Battlefield gave me the giddiest feeling. I don't. I've been waiting for this since I was four years old, guys. Since my consciousness came alive, it was. It's been ingrained into my mind that you know Nintendo could make a really good amusement park. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then they did. And then they did. It only took 24 years, but they did. <laughs> yeah. Brad's been stomping Koompas since he was in the womb. <laughs> I don't know what Koompas is. And I don't know what Koopas. you combined from. Koompas. I thought, Koopas. <laughs> Koopas. I, thought, <laughs> I thought you said Koompas. And I'm like, what did you combine <laughs> to <Koopa> make Koompas? <laughs> Goomkas. Goomkas. <laughs> yeah. Koopa-loopas. Like you said, like you said, it, it, um, Touching on that, you know, I've been wanting this forever type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it was okay. So for those who I guess don't know, it, it's part of Universal Studios Hollywood, and um, it, it just does such a great job of uh, immersing you in in sort of this uh, Mario esque type world. Um, and it everything from just the atmosphere, the music, and the like, the way it looks. It made me really emotional uh, just standing there. But you couldn't stand for long because there's too many people there. That is um, true. <laughs> and I tried to just take in everything that I could um, while I was there because it, it's one of those once-in-a-lifetime type things uh, that you could, couldn't see happening but actually was happening. And I want to go back sometime really soon. It, it was... It was actually it actually lived up very well to what I imagined it would be. And, yeah. and understanding that it is not a full fledged park, it is more um, it is more on the lines of like if you were to go to Universal and you go to the Harry Potter land, like the, if you go to Hogwarts, it's very similar to that. And I for years, I praised Universal for doing a very good job at making Hogwarts. Um, they it, it it did the same thing. It really captured the feel. You know, it's almost as though that that place makes movies or something, because yeah. it was very very movie esque. <laughs> like, it's almost like, like they're even, working on Mario movies in particular. Yeah, even, uh, the bathroom was themed. I don't know if you went to the bathroom. But, yes, it yeah. was. It was. It was cheap, underwater. Cheap. It, was, it was underwater. Even the music changed. Even the music changed too. Uh, I yeah. I was like, the music just did everything for me in that experience. Noth- it was great. Nothing gave me more joy. Than standing in the lines 
because they yeah. made the lines like its own like you're discovering sub parts of a level in a mario yeah. game yeah me and my sister were standing in line for mario kart and i'm like it's like yoshi's island it's uh, it's awesome yeah. and yeah. it's really weird because when you think about it i'm like we're, we're gonna play mario kart yoshi's island had nothing to do with that <laughs> with that ride but for some reason they're just like oh we're gonna throw in yoshi's island in here and it's gonna be a treat going through this entire line and seeing yoshi's island bowser's castle like it just it was fun they for the amount of area that that uh the park encapsulates it does a really good job at making you go around and collect things and discover things in little areas about the park I, we haven't even gotten to the whole the app in the wrist watch or the i call it a watch is the band but it you know that it made it so that it made mini games at the park that you physically do but it's tied to your app so that you can go collect stamps and achievements and there's little nuances in the park that you can go and go collect more items from using the band like you know hitting blocks or discovering all the little 8-bit sprites or you know the various things that i'm sure hunter really really likes that they included not everything's <laughs> mario <laughs> well it's, it's basically just mario but, it's basically um, Mario, but not everything. <laughs> I'm assuming you guys got the the power up things. Yeah, the the um the bands. Yeah, right. I, yeah. I unfortunately had to to skip on that, but uh, oh, well, we'll uh, have to show it to you next time because it is it it is fun. Mm-hmm. Very very fun. There there was a, a point in the in the time I was there where we were standing by the bathrooms just waiting for my sister to come out and there there were these kids just hitting the blocks next to the bathroom and I'm like, man, if I worked here that sound effect would get old pretty fast. <laughs> it, it 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 was a little annoying with some of the kids and they just would not let up. But that's kinda what it's there for. <laughs> and talking about things that people like really get annoyed with if you work in a certain area, I know Gerardo mentioned the music. Some of the music is actually based on a specific game, like a specific area of a specific game that is a theme park. Yeah, I thought it was a fun little Easter egg that uh, one of the songs that they kept playing in the area was the theme park song from Super Mario Sunshine. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's yeah, very, yeah, yeah. That's, when, that's very nice. That's cool. I like that. That played in, in the cafe. It did play in the cafe. I heard it in the the main area, too, I believe. Yeah. They did. That's when you first notice it. I thought it was super cool. And when you were mentioning just like as you're going through the lines, you're able to kind of discover different things. Even just noticing like at one point we were in line for the um, for the food or something like that. And then I noticed actually right away when we first entered the park, there's Pikmin like carrying one of the little golden coins for Mario. And then <laughs> while we were in line for the cafe, we noticed I noticed even more Pikmin. This I I think there was only those two statues of like those two Pikmin and one of them was actually uh was buried. There was a buried, I think it was a yellow Pikmin. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just think that that's that's super cool. And out of all of the Mario things that were at that park, the one non Mario thing that they added was Pikmin. Of of all the Nintendo franchises. And it's and like, it's one there of wasn't Hunter's any favorites. rubies. I think it would be cool if there was like rupees or something like that, but no, Pikmin. Miyamoto loves Pikmin. <laughs> yeah. So you just gotta wait. Nintendo will probably make their own theme park from scratch at some point. If if they can get to that Disney level, which I'd rather Nintendo be on top next to Disney than Disney, but you know, <laughs> I I'm a little biased that way. There there was also some added information that I got recently in terms of. They're, they're planning on bringing uh, Nintendo World to Orlando, Universal Orlando, but they're not yeah. just stopping there. They are also making another Yoshi's ride there as well as yeah. a DK zone. So expanding so, that to include a Donkey Kong country. Each of the parks are going to have their own separate thing. Like I know the one in Japan doesn't have the um, Super Mario Kart ride. They have a different thing. And we get the Super Mario Kart ride in Hollywood, and then um, Orlando is going to have their own thing too. So you can go to each of the different parks and have roughly the same experience, where you're kind of more gamey, um, 
tackling these like small tasks to go towards to build towards the larger story and defeat the boss at the end. But uh, there's these other small, um, not rides, video game type <laughs> things, additions uh, for each game for each area as well. Mm hmm. I just hope that they build that up to an actual Nintendo zone world. And uh, my 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 thought would be like we would have all the major heavy hitters have a little zone in and of themselves, just cover it in their own little sub theme park. I would love That's to go my to the Hyrule Kingdom. I well, the way that I was thinking about it is like, like you can have Bowser and have Bowser's Castle, but Bowser's Castle would essentially be a barbecue eatery where everything's like mm. flame broiled and whatnot. And then like there will be another kind of like um, what's the game on the Wii U? You know, the one console Nint- no one played, Nintendo Land. Yeah, like Nintendo Land, where like. Yeah, it was not it was, free. It was not free. <laughs> oh, you it was got free for me. I got ordered the Zelda edition used. Or it eventually used became free. It eventually became free. Oh, um, gotcha. But but it, it didn't start off. I was the sucker that bought in when it was not free. <laughs> um, mainly because there wasn't a lot of games sold on that console. But no, or opened with that console. But either way, uh, but I. When I thought of a Nintendo Land, I was kind of thinking it, it it could be like that. So I envisioned maybe one day it could be like a like, oh, Bowser's Castle is going to be an eatery. There's going to be a ride based off Metroid. It's all going to be in the Mushroom Kingdom, but there's going to be the little worlds that represented from each game all kind of within the Mushroom Kingdom spattered, spattered out. Yeah, that's not quite what this is, but um, hopefully no, maybe it's not something but- in the future. But I am an optimist when it comes to these things. I want it to happen. Uh, yeah, um, I there was just a couple of notes that I wanted to talk about, about things that mm-hmm. I observed. Um, so I don't know if any of you got the chance to see the wet floor sign in uh, They're yes. bananas. They're yes. bananas. Oh, it was <laughs> raining. Yes, they are bananas. Yeah. <laughs> they are bananas. <laughs> like, um, it, it was cool. Um, that, yeah. It's, it had Mario Kart in there, so of course there'd have to be bananas. Mm-hmm. Um, I was gonna say touch on the music in the different places, but we already did that. Uh, in the cafe, it was kind of like the first time seeing Toad speak full sentences aside from oh, uh, Mario yeah. Sunshine. <laughs> that um, I'm that not gonna funny. lie, that it was funny. I liked it up until like it. I it kind of got annoying yeah. after a little while. I'm like. <laughs> I understand now why they did change of voice acting for the for the movie. Like sure. I could not stand thirty minutes of that. <laughs> um, we got to try a few of the food from the cafe too. I don't know what yeah. your experience was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually did get to to eat there for a bit. Uh, we made reservations and stuff. It was actually quite simple for us uh, that whole time. The whole experience there was very smooth for me. I don't know about you guys, but. It wasn't smooth. It was, <laughs> it was, so we tried twice. So the second yeah. time we, we were able to do it, it was still long. And for whatever reason was kind of cumbersome to like get our seats and whatnot. But like they did a, you queued up to get into the line. Yeah. There was a queue for the line, which mm-hmm. led to a line where you order food. And then after you order your food and you have your food and drinks, you wait in a line to get a table. So there's like four lines and there's a queue yeah, it, for the first one. <laughs> and yeah. it's it was quite cumbersome. And by the time we actually sat down, I had I already drank all my drink. So yeah. we, we were we sat there and uh, I don't think all of us had our food. Even we, we just brought our trays. So it took a yeah. while for the food to show up. Um and I mean, fair enough. It's not exactly a restaurant. It's you know a theme park restaurant. It's not going to run quite the same. But we did have a nice uh, the guy the guy that waited on us. He he did play along with his role, and that was kind of fun. Right. Yeah. Uh, he he like walked up. He's like, oh my boss, either Toad or Peach or whoever he was referencing. It's Toad. And then uh, yeah, it, it, the, the ch- head Toad bot uh, ch- <laughs> chef or something. Chef Chef Toad. toad. Mm-hmm. Um. And then gave gave a gave a comment to Hunter because he had, had the, the wristband toad watch. Toad. <laughs> yeah, 
Toad Gang represent. Um, <laughs> but uh, and and I, I I like that sort of thing. It it's a little different, I guess, with with like a a table full of twenty year olds. But I can imagine <laughs> that with like a, the five five and ten year olds, where I would have appreciated that as a kid. Oh, what I, a, I appreciated it as a twenty eight year old. Yeah, I, I really <laughs> liked it too, personally. <laughs> I, um, I mean, I liked it. I liked it too. But I, I'm thinking that it would it would have rang harder if if I was like ten, and like that experience happened to me when I was ten. Yeah, I this whole this whole going there, the whole experience, just like, and for the first time in a long time, I was like super super happy to just mm. be aware, conscious of stuff. Um, and uh, my experience in the in the the cafe restaurant thing, um. It, it only took a while ordering the food uh, mm-hmm. was like my own main complaint, like waiting in the toad area and then going past that and like actually placing the order kind of took like maybe 25 minutes in total. Mm. Yeah, it was like 45 minutes for us. Um, and that and was, was once we got inside, it was even worse. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we placed the order and then we walked over to the side and they kind of they took the tray from us and they kind of just sat us somewhere like just out of nowhere out of random um so i i guess we were lucky in the fact that we were seated right away and all we had to do was wait for the uh the food to show up um and what did you guys get what did we all eat <laughs> so we had eyes bigger than our stomachs sure um <laughs> I, at least we, with the so uh, yeah that so we didn't coordinate very well. So we ordered, we got two of the block desserts. So like the the leading up to the flagpole. Mm-hmm. Um, we also had the tiramisu. Uh, mm. That that one was actually pretty good. The the block one yeah. was a little too rich. It was it was actually quite a lot. You probably could have shared it that with two or three people, and that would have been fine. I liked it because it had matcha at the top, so it was more like a semi sweet. Yeah. But as soon as you get past that, it's just too sweet. I really yeah, enjoyed it's, that it's, one. It's, Hmm. Oh, I know you did. The, the uh, I I think I kind of shared it with you, and it and I didn't really have too much, but you had the rest. I'll vouch that I think the best thing that I ate there, and we didn't have everything, but the best thing that I ate was the the Luigi sandwich. The pesto, it was pesto really sandwich. good. I got the Luigi sandwich too. Yeah, but we also too. tried the fire flower spaghetti meatballs. I think your fiance mm-hmm. got that. Yeah. So yeah, she got the fire flower, which that uh, in the picture you see a little fire flower chip. That is entirely Parmesan <laughs> cheese. Yeah, sure. You know, I <laughs> took a bite. I, uh-huh. I did not know that was Parmesan cheese when I took my bite. Mm-hmm. That, that was actually quite uh, upsetting. Re- revolting. <laughs> See, it wasn't bad to me, but it was pretty intense. It's, um, okay, yeah. so I, in a similar vein, I've, 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 I've mistaken hummus for applesauce. <laughs> it's not that hummus is bad. I just had a different expectation about going in. Yeah. So I thought it was like a chip. <laughs> um, so when, when I got nothing but cheesy goodness, <laughs> it, it hit a little different. It wasn't quite the goodness part. It wasn't it, quite the goodness because it slapped me. Yeah. It's a very sharp cheese. Um, I, I got the Mario burger and my sister got the spaghetti. Um, mm-hmm. The Mario burger, it was actually really good. It came with... Uh, bacon and mushrooms lettuce tomato um i kind of forgot that there was mushrooms on it i'm not the biggest fan of mushrooms but i, I was already eating well, it should have gone to the mushroom kingdom i know right <laughs> <laughs> um it was fine it was good it was um my barometer i guess you could say for theme park food it was pretty better than most but i've been hearing mixed opinions about the food um from I've heard that Different about the sources. Mario Burger. The Mario Burger isn't quite as good, but then the Luigi Burger people seem to have really high opinions of. It seems to depend on the specific, like, what you get from it, it seems. Um, the burger itself was kind of a bit overdone, but the, mm. um, the thing that saved it for me was, like, it just tasted good, even if it was overdone. Um, and the fries were absolute Whoa. bangers. So yeah, I'm imagining the fries are the same with the Luigi fries. It was like the garlic fries. Yeah, it's yeah. the truffle, it, truffle, the truffle, fries. truffle yeah. fries because mushrooms. So truffles. Yeah, yeah that that's cool. Those, those fries were Ooh. really good. Yeah, I do, so I good. did really yeah. like those fries. 
Um, Did you guys get to try, because we got the, um, my girlfriend and I got the cheesy garlic knots. Did you guys get to try those? Did we we give you guys any? Or did we just keep them for ourselves? Um, I think I, I think I had, I think I had like a piece. I remember eating the tomato soup and the, and I think I had a bite of the mushroom soup. Yeah, she got the mushroom soup, which is surprisingly really good, actually. And then we also got the garlic knots, and the garlic knots were so good. I got also the peach cu- cupcake. Um, mm. It was it was pretty good, but probably really sweet to other people. Um, if you're mm-hmm. sensitive to to things just being sweet, it was you know what funfetti is, right? That type of like, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It's kind of like that. It tasted like a birthday cake too. Um. It was good. Uh, me and my sister shared it, so it wasn't too overwhelming. Um, That's good. We had way too much dessert. <laughs> I was you, very overwhelmed. Did you try the Superstar Lemon Squash, the beverage? Mm, no. Although that, I did I did try one of the, the sodas outside of the cafe. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, which one? The peach soda. Oh, mm. good for you. It was okay, so, so good. So I had the Luigi one, and for some reason, they thought applesauce was a good topping. <laughs> and mm. I did, looking at it, I'm I'm like, I don't understand <laughs> why, why the applesauce is a thing. Like, it was, it was kind of gross. <laughs> uh, I went all Luigi when going there, but that, yeah, that one wasn't it. Yeah, it was, I love the peach soda. I I thoroughly enjoyed all the food that I had there. And that's actually saying a lot because normally amusement park food, like depending on where you go, it's over expensive or it's too expensive. And generally it's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, It's not like blow your socks off type good, like the best thing I've ever had, but it's like. The Luigi burger was. It it over performs for for theme park food, if that makes sense. Yeah, we're comparing it to theme park. Theme park food is the average we're talking about here. <laughs> yeah. It made that price tag slightly better. Sure. Yeah. Slightly yeah. yeah. It, 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 um, you know. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of price tags, did anybody see the price of those popcorn buckets? Oh, my God. And I'm going to buy one next time I go. <laughs> it's, it is ridiculous. Popcorn is some of the most cheapest things you can get on the planet. But yet, when you get a when you get a star man and say, fill this with some of the cheapest substance on the planet... I will happily pay forty bucks for that star man. And if you want the Mario, <laughs> it's forty two. Oh, oh God! <laughs> is uh, is that the Mario Kart? Yeah, they put the popcorn Yo. in the engine. Yeah, and that one. That even... one had like a lot less space for the popcorn too. It looked like <laughs> mm-hmm. so you get even less popcorn. <laughs> it and you know I so I got the um the the one up beverage and I'm going to go back for the next time and I'm going to get the uh, super mushroom beverage too, just because I want to have matching sets at my house. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I want to use it as like a dec- decorative or like when people are over and they're having like a party, I, you can use it as kind of like a, not necessarily a mixer, but like to house some drinks and whatnot. That'd be fun. It, it, yeah. It's kind of like if you want a themed like get together, uh, there's a lot have of a cool Mario stuff. Night. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff over there that's, you know, overpriced as all hell. But, you know, if you make it worth it, you can make that 20 to 40 bucks go a long way. Um, you know, speaking of shopping, did any of you uh, get any, like, from the gift shops? Anything from gift, gift shops? So, did I get anything from I got some of the candy, which came in a question mark block, which I thought that was pretty fun. But uh, other than that, I didn't get anything from Super Nintendo World. No, I think I on my next go ahead, I was going to go get more things. Um, yeah, the the shirts. I I actually didn't really like the shirts all too much. Mm-hmm. I liked more like the um, there were like stamps and like badges and like magnets mm-hmm. that I actually thought were pretty cool. And a lot of them were like Mario Kart inspired. So, yeah, when I go back, I think I'm going to go get one of those. So. The the we ended up going to all of the the gift shops in Universal just to be sure because yeah. all of them sold the same Mario stuff no matter which yeah. one you went to um, yeah. even in city at City Walk too same stuff um, yeah I walked in there for a bit and uh, I could I got two shirts but one of them I, so I bought them both in my size and they're both the same size shirts 
one of them fits so poorly. Um, I, I just want to know what happened. Um, <laughs> and uh, the other one fits perfectly, so I have no clue. Um, and uh, my sister got the one of those headbands. Uh, it was Luigi that you probably saw. Mm. Um, Is it the one where he's just laying on your head? Yeah, it kind of looks like he's doing like the, the Smash Brothers render of him, you know, and he's like leaning forward. Oh yeah, yeah I I actually like did want to get I did want to get one of those. They, they, it was it was funny wa- watching people walk around with those. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they they have things like you know Brad was saying like keychains, plushes, stuff like that. Uh, not a single peach plush. Hmm. Really? Huh? Oh, I had to relook at that because plenty of Mario and Luigi. Yeah, that Mario, Luigi, Toad, Yoshi, Bowser, no peach. Uh. And, uh, Which is weird because yeah. they have they have the the ba- so the bands are Mario, Luigi, Toad, Yoshi, Peach, and Daisy. Those were the ones that they highlighted for the bands. So I I I, I would and also surprisingly no Bowser, but I guess that makes sense if you wanted to be the heroes in in the park. Yeah, the idea is that you're defeating Bowser in the Mario Kart ride. Yeah, speaking of defeating love, Bowser in the Mario Kart ride, what was your experience with that? Okay, so that was actually really cool. I I don't really like augmented reality, generally speaking, because I think the 3DS kind of killed it for me. But you say they to did an it, AR engineer, yeah, I, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Hunter. <laughs> but it was Nintendo's fault with the 3DS. Um, but I actually really liked uh, the Bowser ride, uh, mostly because I liked how it blended the. Uh, the actual ride that you are going around in. So you're seeing all these things, but the AR itself was its own mini game that you had to accomplish while on the ride. Mm-hmm. And I would say in like a better fashion than the Buzz Lightyear ride at Disneyland. Uh, Disneyland. Yeah. That's how I think I of it like that, but a little better, at least in my opinion. Um, So something that I try to connect it to was, not only the buzz ride but also at california adventure there's toy story midway mania um and that's a 3d game Mm -hmm. um and it it works significantly better than both of those rides i think at least um i it was it was it was a full-fledged game yeah it was actually pretty sick um that was the first thing we did when we got to super mario world or nintendo world um and uh, right as soon as we were going to get on, uh, they were like, sorry, folks, uh, we're experiencing some technical difficulties. Uh, I guess we'll just stand here for 15 minutes. Like we were literally about to get on and uh, something happened. So oh, no. that, that was not cool, but uh, we got through it. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, they had to like. I don't know. It was weird because they had to get everybody off the ride before they sent more out. So I wonder what happened. Um, so that actually happened to us, but on our second attempt to go on it, we only went on it once, but we tried going on it again. But they it it, it uh something happened and they had to basically kick everybody out the line because it was like, ah, oh, this is going to take forever. So uh, go figure something else out. We'll call you back. But that meant that there was no one in the line. So we had a really good ch- good time going around getting pictures of the whole the whole set without people in the line. Mm-hmm. So that was that was a fun experience in and of itself. Yeah, even yeah, man, just even the the slightest inconvenience like that, it, it's still pretty cool to to experience uh, the area around you. And back to the right itself, um, it, for those uninitiated, yet to go yet um it's um an augmented reality right like brad said uh they they put you in a it's a mario kart itself it's it's four people to a a car uh they give you this like visor uh, on top of uh, another visor (laughs) um (laughs) that was a weird way of entering the the ride i i will say yeah it took it it, there was a learning curve to putting that on Mm -hmm. I, i got confused for a second yeah, it was like grabbing 3D glasses at a movie theater, but like 10 times more complicated, I guess. Yeah. 
And then uh, when you, you put the visor on, you look down at the steering wheel and you see coins and shells. Um, and your goal is to collect 100 coins uh, during the ride and uh, throw red shells at the uh, Koopa, Koopa Wings and Bowser. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, did you guys win? I won. And then my fiance got most coins on my on our like car rides. <laughs> so it was much to my dismay. So I, um, me and my sister managed to, to overscore uh, the, the 100 point threshold, but the people behind us did not. So we didn't win. <laughs> but behind us had like 30 or 40 uh, by the end of it all. Yeah, so I, I don't understand the whole scoring system of it because um, me and my sister, we both scored over 100 coins, which was the goal uh, to win. But the people behind us had a combination of like maybe 30 together coins <laughs> so um oh that's what happens when you don't share with gamers yeah honestly that's a pretty abysmal score yeah i don't think they fully yeah. understood what was going on it was fun i i i wish i could have paid attention more to like the ride itself but it, it kind of went through a whole mario kart cup in a span of like 90 seconds um yeah it was it was really cool. Um, took a couple pictures of the because uh, even like in the line, it references the whole thing is a whole Mario Kart reference. So all of the like the sponsors from Mario Kart Eight are there, um, mm-hmm. and you know like the course the course selection menus how it has like whatever cup it is and it has like a symbol or whatever you know. Um, mm-hmm. There's it's the Universal Cup. And that's, it's like, I was like, oh, okay, that's the last Mario Kart DLC. It's the Universal DLC. That would um, be so cool. <laughs> it, I, I, I honestly, I also think that just the name of that kind of cup even makes sense in the Mario universe. Yeah. Just the Universal <laughs> Cup. That just sounds good. It was so and cool. And even aside from that, there was a bunch of like, um, some of the books in like Bowser's study or something like that. It was like, what was like? The saga of the Mushroom Kingdom. I took pictures of all these. The Double Dash Years was one of the book's <laughs> names, which I thought was really funny. There was one that was just Deja Vu. But then there was like it, a tell-all type book for a Shy Guy. that was like Shy Guy Behind the Mask. It, it was fantastic, and I, I loved each and every single one of them. Yeah, one of the ones that I really liked was there was just one that was just called Inside Story. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that one. <laughs> It was in Bowser's study. <laughs> there is also Yoshi's story too. Oh. Yeah, man, this place we had, is great. We, we had a good time looking yeah. through all that. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, this is probably one of the only rides I would ever want to wait in the line for because, uh, for me, um, we got there super early. We got in an hour before the park actually opened, and we were just able to basically run straight through the line and uh, get on except for that mm-hmm. breakdown that happened. Um, so I didn't really get to pay attention to the, to the queue much. Um, but, you know, yeah. you, you walk through Yoshi's Island and then you go to Bowser's Castle and you kind of, like, see his, uh, like, schematic room and, like, building of bomb bombs and the, the bullet bills and stuff like that. And the, uh, what are those? Mecha Koopas. Yeah, Mecha Koopas. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, it's cool to seeing inside of bowser's place of residence i suppose they just did a really good job at capturing like like a a mario world Uh uh-huh now that we've recovered and had ourselves a little chat what did you think leave us a comment on youtube and like the episode that really helps us out we're also on twitter and instagram at the low hp podcast if you want to reach out there And subscribe if you want to catch more of us on YouTube. We're also on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Links in the show notes, as always.